What's up everybody, it's Fred, and today I'm gonna to be cooking a turkey meatloaf. It's healthy, and uh, I wanted to show you guys how to make one because this is uh, a life skill, okay? We need to know how to cook. If you're a dude, you need to know how to cook because you're gonna have a girl in your life and you're gonna to wanna to make dinner for her and she's gonna be looking for a good dinner and you have to impress her. If you're a girl, well then you know you gotta cook something that a man likes and men like a meatloaf, all right? But you don't want your man eating a, you know, a meatloaf that's got a lot of fat in it and it's unhealthy. You wanna make him something healthy that'll actually eat, right? And then if you got kids, this is a perfect meatloaf because we got tons of vegetables that we're gonna put into the meatloaf and you won't even know it's there, which is great because we have to trick our kids into eating vegetables. And you know what's funny, when we serve this meatloaf to our child, we also put a side of vegetables there. And we say, you have to eat your vegetables. And we, we get on her, we make sure she's eating something. She doesn't eat them all, but she'll eat like a couple pieces of broccoli or something. And we just know we're very happy that she ate that, plus the vegetables that are secretly in there. And when she comes across this video in the future, she's gonna either be happy or she's gonna be mad at me that I tricked her. But um, what we put in this meatloaf is simple. I like to do, I, I like to do the uh, ground turkey breast. If you have a store where you can get ground turkey breast, get it. The problem with ground turkey breast, it has no fat in it really, so it can be very dry. Be careful what you cook with it. You have to add stuff to it to really you know, make it moist and, and kind of like something you want to eat. Um, and like I said, we're going to be adding a lot of vegetables to this. So believe me, this is a very moist meatloaf and you're, you're, you're going to enjoy it. So uh, get a pound, two pounds, depending on the size of your, you know, how you want to roll. And then today I'm using Brussels sprouts, which I'm going to have to chop up very small pieces, very small, like chop, 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 chop. You gotta always have onions. And I'm also adding a uh, zucchini and I'm adding mushrooms. Now you could, you could experiment with different vegetables. Peppers, if you got them, definitely. If I had peppers in the fridge, I would be using them. But we don't have them. And I don't wanna go to the store. So I'm using what we got. And that's what I like about this meatloaf. If you have something in there that, you know, is gonna go bad, a vegetable that maybe um, doesn't seem like it would go. If you chop it up, you saute it, add salt, pepper with the olive oil, it's gonna be awesome. So um, what you need to make a meatloaf is, is one of these pans. And um, this pan, I don't know if you guys can see it in here, but it's kind of like destroyed in here because I would uh, spray a, you know pan or something in here and then put the meatloaf and I did this a couple of times and the, the meat still stuck to the sides and it wasn't easy to clean and I ended up damaging the pan and it's kind of like scratched up and screwed up. And then uh, I'm talking to my wife and she says, no nah, man, you could either line it with aluminum foil. And I was like, yeah, I don't really like that because health wise, there is some uh, research showing that the aluminum actually leaches into our foods, right? So you're heating up the meat in the aluminum and I don't know, I, I'm not making a big deal out of it, but if I have an other alternative, I would use parchment paper. It's literally paper that you can put in the oven and I line the pan with the parchment paper, I put the meatloaf meat into it and I cook it and when everything is said and done, it pretty much keeps your, your uh, baking pan, whatever this is, uh, clean. So this is a good tip for you guys. You know, um, if, you're, if you're younger and you're just learning how to cook and stuff like that, this is, uh, this is good shit right here. And that's why my cooking show is called Cooking Shit, okay? We're cooking shit today. So like I said, we're gonna chop up these uh, vegetables. I'm gonna add some Swiss cheese to it. We're gonna add some breadcrumbs to it. Add a, a scramble up an egg. Add that to it. 
and it's going in the oven. It cooks for 45 minutes. It comes out of the oven and you can put ketchup on it. And if you really want to make it a good treat, less healthy though, you add brown sugar to the ketchup and then you put that on your uh, meatloaf. And you know, if you got a kid, they're going to love that. But it doesn't matter because you got them eating those vegetables in there. So let's get to the chopping and let's get to the saute because we got to get this ready. All right, guys, so uh, let's talk cooking spray right here. Um, got Pam, and then we have olive oil cooking spray. Now, which one do you think is the one I prefer? Olive oil, because Pam is made with canola oil, and apparently it's not that healthy for you. Of course, we're only using this stuff sparingly anyway, so it's one of those things where I will use it, but... Um, I don't know, we buy them both. Sometimes I use them interchangeably, but I always try to stick with just regular olive oil. But, you know, this is one of those things too where it kind of sucks because the, um, we don't, we're not sure about this cooking oil either. Um, olive oil, uh, is, it, is it legit olive oil? There's a lot of, um, you know, corruption in the industry and they try to sneak through bullshit stuff and I don't know if it's legit. It might be, it might not be 100% olive oil. It might have a little of the canola mixed in. I don't know. But just going off of the label, it's olive oil. So let's just stick with it. Uh, get the pan good and hot. I'm going to add the onions in first. And then I'm going to go back and do the rest of the vegetables. That's because you really want to get your onions really cooked well. Nice and caramelized so they're nice and sweet. And um, as you can see, I use a lot of olive oil in that spray. I'm going to be adding more olive oil as I saute these vegetables. The reason why um, I've started off with spray is just to keep it to a minimum for now. So, um, yeah, just get the onions in. And let them start cooking on a, on a medium heat. All right, so now I'm just adding, uh, I got the onions and I got the Brussels sprouts and now I'm adding the zucchini in and I'm gonna throw the mushrooms in next. And I did it in that order because, you know, the, the zucchini and the mushrooms, they don't really need that long to cook. But I really wanted to get those onions cooked well. And also another ingredient that's gonna go in right at the end, I'm gonna, I got some uh, minced garlic here. Fresh garlic is better. But um, I'm just going to throw in like a, a teaspoon, well, not nah, half a teaspoon of minced garlic. Right at the end, if you, if you um, cook with garlic, make sure you don't overcook it because it'll get bitter. All right, so I wanted you guys to really see this nice little medley, 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 medley of vegetables we got here. So this is the onions and the mushrooms. And of course, we got the zucchini in there and the Brussels sprouts. And you can see it's very finely chopped, right? And I'm just really taking my time cooking this with plenty of olive oil. I didn't add any salt and pepper yet, but I will. And I still have to add the minced garlic. But the whole idea here is to let this just cook. Let those onions caramelize. And look, this is a full... I, what is this, a 12-inch frying pan or 10-inch or something? This is full. This is a lot of stuff in here. So imagine, you know, a pound of ground turkey, and then we're adding this plus the egg and the, and the breadcrumbs and the cheese. I mean, it, this 
makes a very plump and, you know, highly dense with vegetables kind of loaf. And um, it's it's going to be delicious because this right here, this, this medley of vegetables really uh, comes out well. All right, so over here I have some red potatoes. What I like to do is cut them into fourths, uh, put it on a baking tray, uh, you spray the baking spray with, with the olive oil, and then I spray the olive oil spray on the potatoes and kind of mix it up with salt and pepper. And when you cook it in the oven at like 450, which is what the same temperature is going to be for the meatloaf, so it's all the same thing, all in the oven at once, um, these should come out sooner. It'll take about 45 minutes to cook the, the loaf, maybe a little less. Uh, but these should come out in like 30 minutes. They'll, they'll actually be pretty crisp. And, uh, oh man, with the salt and pepper on them, dip it into ketchup. Awesome. So I cook them, I cut them up like this. You know, go the long way. So they're like, you know, house fries, you know. If you want, you could actually cut them one more time, make them thinner. Uh, they'll cook a lot faster and they'll be crunchier. But we like them like this. They get really nice. Also, if you really don't want to, you don't have to. You could just leave them whole like this and you could cook them just like this. It's no problem. But uh, this particular bag, they're, they're kind of on the larger side, so I'm going to cut them. All right, so I'm gonna do one whole egg. I'm gonna crack it, put it in this bowl here, and just mix it up. And if you're you know, concerned about fat content, saturated fat, obviously you don't need to use the yolk. You could do like two or three egg whites, um, but that's not really fat, you know, and since it's such a lean meat, I have no problem adding one yolk to an entire loaf. Um, but you also have to consider there's uh, olive oil being used, right? So the fat content will come up a little bit, but we're talking olive oil for starters, which is a, a monosaturated fat, and um, you know, a yolk. It's not a big deal. So we're going to add, here's the meat. I'm just going to add that right in there. I'm going to throw the vegetables in. They're, st they're still sauteing. I just added the garlic. And here's some Swiss cheese. And I like Swiss cheese. And man, I think this really makes it taste good. Obviously, if you're cutting, you know, trying to count your calories, you're trying to get all shredded and ripped up, maybe don't add the Swiss cheese. Or do the egg whites and then do the Swiss cheese. Um, you know, it's up to you. Also, there is uh, alternatives out there like vegan cheese and things like that. You know, I don't like vegan cheese, but I would use it for this. Because you can't tell, you know, it would be fine. So that's going to go like that. I'm going to mix that, get that all mixed together, and then I'm going to add the vegetables on top. All right, guys, check this out. I got this knife here that has no tip on it, no point. It's blunt. All right, it's a very sharp knife. And it's like basically a vegetable knife. And I really never could really figure out what the heck is the big deal about having a point or not. But, um, you know, in the name of sharing information with everybody, I think I kind of figured it out. I could probably just Google it and, and, and find out, but that would be too easy. But here's, here's what I notice, okay? When I'm cutting these potatoes, right, I like to do it in such a way, I want to cut these in, in quarters, right? So I hold it like this, and then I put the knife through. I don't know if you can see that. Here, if I go like this, I put the knife in there, chop down. Then I move the potatoes like that, and I go in there and I chop down. And I didn't have to worry about stabbing myself. So that could be the reason why. All right, so here's our turkey and cheese mixed together with the egg. So that's all set. Still got to add some more salt and pepper to this. I added salt and pepper to the vegetables. And, you know, I picked that little detail up. Um, you, you, salt, you salt and pepper um, everything in layers. Uh, that's what, I don't know if that really matters or not, but 
uh, a chef told me that, that, you know, that you salt and pepper this, you salt and pepper that, you salt and pepper the other thing, and then you mix everything together, and everything is well salt and peppered. So, I like to do this stuff first to make sure that the meat is well blended with the cheese and the egg and the salt and pepper. Okay, so now, I mean, this is crazy. This is a pound, okay? So this is, this is great for me and my family. If you have a big family, you're gonna need two pounds, right? But just think about this. We got this, and now we're gonna add in these awesome, look at that steamy, oh man, this is so good. I could just eat this right now. I'm gonna add this in there. Very careful, we don't wanna make a mess. I try to keep things clean as I cook. That's another tip for you guys. Uh, don't keep piling up the mess and everything like that. Try to clean as you go. For some reason, it just works better when you do it that way. So that way when you're done cooking, you could just easily go about your business. You don't have to go through all this cleaning. All right, so there's the vegetables added on top. And I mean, now you got this. It is a serious amount of vegetables. It's probably more vegetables than there is meat. Oh, I just spilled stuff on the floor. No, that's all right. When the camera's off, I'll just pick it up and put it in here and nobody will know. I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna do that. Although the floors were cleaned today very well. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's that, and now we're gonna put the breadcrumbs. And like I said, I'm gonna kinda go a little sparingly. These are uh, seasoned breadcrumbs, and you know, they're fine. Another uh, good way to go is panko. P-A-N-K-O, panko breadcrumbs. Uh, they're a little crunchier. Um, not that that really matters, because they get soggy once you put them in. But um, that's just another way of adding breadcrumbs. Try it out when you go to the supermarket. They have it. Try them out. Buy them. All right. So I think that's going to be a good enough amount right there. And here we go. We're mixing it all up again. And I mean, this is um, a considerable amount of material here. This is a loaf, baby. This will fill you up and keep you full. Okay, now if you're doing the, the meal prep thing and this is just all for you, you know, I would say for a dude, um, you know, big dude who's really bulking and trying to, you know, put on the weight, this would be two servings. Um, if it's summertime and you're trying to like rip up a little bit, make it four servings. And if you're a woman, well, make sure you eat, you know, that's all I can say is. Make sure you eat because if you're cutting back on those calories and you're not getting enough protein and stuff like that, you know, you might think you're losing weight and all that, but you might actually be um, tricking your body into that you're starving. Um, so give yourself some food, especially if you're working out. All right, so there it is, guys. That's pretty much everything. It's now going to go into the loaf pan. All right, so here's the parchment paper. It's a little tough to work with the way it lays in there. You just got to do your best. <clears throat> and I like to use a spoon and just kind of ladle it in and push it down into the corners of the, of the parchment paper so that it sits tight against the, the loaf pan. You know, because the, you'll see it when you do it, there's like kind of like a, a puffy, fluffy section in the corners from the way the paper sits. But you can get rid of that easily by just getting this in there and pushing it down. And don't compress it. Like, don't smush it all down nice and tight in there. Um, I don't really have any other reason to say that other than um, I think you just pack it too tight and it's not going to be like light and fluffy, if you know what I mean. Um, essentially, just get this in here. Okay. 
Boom, boom, boom. Like that. And I just kind of take the fork and carefully make sure the parchment paper is right there. And see how I'm just kind of lightly pressing it into the corners, pushing it down a little bit, a little bit, but don't pack it. It doesn't need to be packed. And boom, there it goes, guys. This bad boy is going to go in the oven for 45 minutes, maybe a little less. And the potatoes are going to go in there. And we're going to cook some broccoli on the side. I'm going to steam it. And I'm going to make it nice and steamed. Maybe put a little butter on it for my daughter so that she's like into it. And that's dinner, guys. That's the whole thing. And if, like I said, you're, you're meal prepping, this can last you a couple of days. And there you have your finished meatloaf with the potatoes right there. Take a look in there. Oh, yeah. You can't even see any of the veg, right?